Gage Pramar here, crushbackpain.com. We're going to talk about herniated disc exercises. If this video helps you, leave me a thumbs up below. If you have any questions, drop me a line. I will answer your questions. And subscribe to the Crush Back Pain YouTube channel. Herniated disc exercises. What makes an exercise herniated disc friendly? That's really what we need to cover because you can make a lot of different exercises herniated disc friendly. So as far as specific herniated disc exercises, we will cover that some, but you need to understand the general principles of how the disc functions and what types of motion can cause a herniated disc to become more symptomatic, more painful basically. So I've got this little spinal model right here, and this is a really good one because it has a disc that is just like the disc in a live human being. So I can show you what types of motions cause a disc to herniate and what types of motions decompress the disc and can decrease the symptoms from a herniation. So first of all, just so when I'm showing you on the model so you know what we're talking about, lumbar flexion, this is lumbar flexion. So lumbar spine, lower back, basically anything that rounds that lower back out is flexion. So repetitive forward bending, um, any position that puts your spine more in a flexed position, that's flexion. Extension, this is extension, okay, bending backward. So I'm going to show you some different things with this model so you get a good feel. So this is the vertebrae here above and below. This is the disc in the middle. This is the front. This is looking at it from the side looking at this motion segment from the back. These are the facet joints. You can see them on either side. That's the spinous process. So when we move, you can see those facet joints move. These are nerve roots that come off the spinal cord. This is actually the spinal cord. So what I was just showing you earlier, when you bend forward, this is what happens. When you bend backward, this is what happens. Now, with herniated discs, the reason we want to avoid end range and repetitive flexion, when you bend forward and you have compression, that actually causes the disc to herniate. Now I'm causing a herniation right now. You can see that red part coming out of the disc. That's the nucleus pulposus. That's the inside that herniates. And when I let go and let the lumbar motion segment come back into neutral and I don't have the compression, that herniation goes right back in. So you can see, if I come in here and I start getting repetitive flexion, you can see that red part of the disc start to come out. But then if I come back into extension, you can see that goes right back in. So that's one of the reasons that extension-oriented exercise is oftentimes beneficial for herniated discs, and it can decrease the leg pain that's related to a disc irritating a nerve root. You can see the nerve root right here. You can see where the disc herniates. It's generally posterior and lateral, which is where this herniation is on this model. But I can flex the spine and compress it. I can make that herniate. But then I can also put the spine back into neutral, which allows that to decompress and you can see that herniation decreases. So that's why it's so important to avoid repetitive lumbar flexion and in-range lumbar flexion if you have a herniated disc. Now as far as specific exercises for herniated discs, if you have leg pain, oftentimes called sciatica, you want to see if you can centralize the leg pain. That means make the leg pain get closer to the lower back. We've talked about this elsewhere in other videos, so I'll just cover it quickly. Basically, you want to see if extension, which is this, or doing a prone press up, lying on your stomach and pressing up, you want to see if that will decrease the leg pain or make it come up closer to the back. So if it's in your calf, it, may, it might come up and get to the back of your thigh. If it's in the back of your thigh, it might come up in your buttock. You want to see if you can centralize the symptoms. If you can, with that repetitive extension movement, then you want to use that basically as a treatment to get the leg pain to decrease. And then as the leg pain de decreases, you transition to more lumbar stabilization training. Now, if you have a herniated disc, but you don't have sciatica, you don't have leg pain, the pain's more localized to the lower back, you wanna start to focus on lumbar stabilization training right off the bat. And again, we were just looking at this model, you wanna be cognizant to keep the lumbar spine neutral so you're not flexing it too much or extending it too much, it's in that neutral zone, so you, sh you can still get motion, 
but it's more in that neutral zone that, that tends to not put too much tensile force on the back part of the disc and too much compression through the disc. So you can make a lot of different exercises herniated disc friendly. You can do a lot of different core work. You can do a lot of different leg work, upper body work. The key is getting that lumbar spine in a neutral position and using the abdominal muscles to keep it there while you're doing the exercise. So if you do that, a lot of different exercises are herniated disc friendly. And sometimes you have to experiment with them and modify them so you don't get leg pain or your back feels good. It's not making the pain worse. But the take home message is, if you have a herniated disc that's causing back pain or leg pain, sciatica, then you want to really focus on exercises that you can maintain the lumbar spine in a neutral position and work the core, work the glutes, work the legs, work the upper body. That's the key. You can, you can basically get a full body workout, maintain the lumbar spine in neutral and not exacerbate disc symptoms. And, and that's the key to pain relief and to lower back pain prevention in the future. So it's not exactly so cut and dried as, hey, these are herniated disc exercises. These are the only ones you can do. If you understand the principles that govern how a herniated disc acts, what types of motion exacerbate it, and what types of motion decrease the, the disc herniation related pain, then you can basically build an entire program and work your entire body without bothering the disc. And, and that's the key to long-term results, long-term pain relief, and the prevention of lower back pain in the future. If you have any questions, drop me a line below. This video helps you leave me a thumbs up and subscribe to the Crush Back Pain YouTube channel.